Hey guys, what's up? I'm gonna tell you about 50% off our online courses coming up. It's gonna be for only one day. So you'll have a 24 hour window to take advantage of 50% off these courses. Stay tuned, I'll let you know in this video. Now, today's video, oh my gosh, so many of you are so confused and frustrated about Varroa destructor mites. You know that mites are bad for your hives. You understand, you've heard me say enough that, oh, we have to control the mites, but then you get into the how-tos and it becomes really confusing. For example, you know, you wanna test for your mites, but then you have to say, do I wanna do an alcohol wash and murder 300 bees? Or do I wanna do a powdered sugar test and not kill my bees, but the powdered sugar test doesn't really get all the mites off the bees where the alcohol wash does. Ah, and then you have to say, if I have over the threshold of mites that uh, I need to treat my bees, what treatment do I use? And then you're kind of like, okay, these treatments are so confusing because some treatments are soft treatments, some are harsh or hard treatments. And some of them I can use with my honey supers on, some of them I have to take my honey supers off, some of them uh, don't kill mites below the cap cells, some do, uh, some of them are temperature sensitive, some aren't, it's just so confusing. So I'm gonna help you out here. You'll notice that I have never taken a strong position and simply tell you what to do. And that's because many of you do say, David, just tell me what to do about mites, I'll do it. Well, I can't do that. Why? Your hive is different. You may only have five or 10 frames in your hive. I may have 20. And the label is the law. You have different temperatures than I do. Maybe you're wanting your honey supers to stay on your hive while you treat them, where I'm gonna wait and wanna take mine off, vice versa. It's just, there's too many variants for me to give you one thing to do or one way to treat. Okay, don't panic yet. What I'm gonna do I'm gonna explain each of these treatments that are pretty common today. Over the next maybe couple of months, I'm gonna take each of these products and I'm gonna work through the label with you. Now, let me say a caveat is the label may change. I'm gonna be saying the label as it appears in the batch that I received and you know, videos are time sensitive. So be sure and always look at the label that you get. It may be different than the label that I'm sharing in the video. Just wanna put that out there. Today, we're gonna to target Apovar. Apovar has been around for a while and it is Amitrez. Apovar is considered a hard treatment, not a soft treatment. Softer treatments are things like Osalic, Formic, Formic Pro, Formic Acid, uh, Hop, and Thymol. Those are the softer approaches, uh, dealing more with acid, kind of burning the mites where we get into Amitrez or Apovar, and this is a, a chemical that we use to actually affect and have a harsh reaction from a neurological point of view. It starts to, uh, over a slow release of this chemical in the hive, starts to kill the mites in the hive. But today I'm gonna to start with this one. I have it sitting around, be a good video. So let's jump and get started. That's pretty heavy, got a lot of honey in it. So let's just set this down here. <clears throat> that gives us uh, exposure to the bees. Now we're ready to put our two strips in here. All right, so the neat thing about these strips, when you're ready to use them, I'm gonna use, start with this one in the bottom. So you take it and you just separate these two like this. Now we have our individual strip. Some people will use this little flap and push it down between frames, but when you do that, it seems to want to work its way back up. So I brought some toothpicks because this actually has a hole in it and I can insert it in the hole like this. Now I can choose an area between the frames that doesn't have a buildup of comb where this goes down easily. So you might have to look around a little bit to feel how it can slide between frames. Not feeling a gap there. A gap anyway. There's a nice gap there. So let's go ahead and just insert this all the way down. And let the toothpick hold it up. We'll take our other toothpick. Now we need to leave two frames between each of these strips, at least two. I'm gonna go ahead and put three between them just so I can get a little bit better coverage. So one, two, three, and I'm gonna put it about right in here. Now we're ready to take the top cover off 
and put the strips on this top deep. So let's make sure we smoke it like we're doing a regular inspection. Let's smoke under this top cover. All right, so let's go ahead and separate these two strips here. And let's get ready to place them in between frames. It's important that we keep track, so we're gonna to have to really remember that we need to come back and remove these in 42 days. All right, we got one of them in. One, two, three. One, one, two, three. Let's put it about right here. Yeah, I'm gonna go right here, it'd be better. Perfect. All right, we've got them in there now. Let's put our top cover on. All right, so let's walk through this label together. I know a lot of you might feel intimidated by these complicated kind of scientific labels that may be hard to understand. So I'm gonna break it down. We'll just walk through it together. So here's 14 points that I extracted out of that label that you need to follow. Number one, you gotta make sure that you remove any honey supers. You don't want honey supers on there during this treatment. Take those off. Number two, it says that we have to use two strips per deep chamber, brood chamber. So in that case, we can use a total of four strips on a hive that has two uh, deep brood boxes. Now the label also says that you need to put at least two frames between the two strips. So in my case, I might go ahead and do three to kind of spread them out a little bit. The next part of the label that's important is it says we need to leave these strips in the hive for 42 days. It says a maximum of 56 days. Um, not sure why there's a difference there. It seems like they should have just stuck with one uh, date, but maybe that there's another part of the label that says you may need to reposition them. So maybe that repositioning can absorb some more days. If you need to reposition it, you can go 56 days. The label also says that we have to wait 14 days until we put supers back on. The label says do not reuse the strips. So you think, okay, I, these still have something in them. Maybe I can reuse them. I've heard some reports from people saying that they have reused them and it did work, but since the label says not to, we should not break the law. Don't reuse those strips. The label also says you shouldn't use them more than two times a year. And typically what most people do with Apivar, they use it once in the spring and once in the fall. And there's been some independent studies done that shows that a spring treatment is more effective than a fall treatment. Now, I don't know if that's been uh, scientifically studied over and over again. It was a, a, a complete study that did show that. But in either case, most people only use these two times a year at the most, and that's once in the spring, once in the fall. Now, it doesn't mean that you need to uh, forget about fight, fighting mites the other times of the year. You still need to be using other things to control your mites. And you know, I'm a big proponent of IPM, Integrated Pest Management, and that includes some things like green drone combs, green bottom board, powdered sugar dusting, breaking the queen's brood cycle. If you can control your mites with these four levels of IPM, you never have to really get to the big guns. And so always try to control mites using the least amount of chemicals that you can. Now, one of the most important things and when you're administering this uh, treatment is it does say you have to use chemical resistant gloves. Now, the gloves that I use in, in my beekeeping operation are chemical resistant gloves. I have found them to be sting resistant for me. Now they may not be for you, but I buy cheap pairs of these chemical resistant gloves on Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description below and uh, you can get those gloves and use them for inspecting your hives. And then you can also use them when handling uh, these kind of treatments. The label says when you're done and you pull those out, how do you get rid of them? What do you do with them? Well, it says to wrap them up in a newspaper. Does anybody have newspapers anymore? Is that a thing, newspapers? Anyway, wrap them up in newspaper and then throw them in the trash. That's what the label says. <laughs> no, I thought that is like, okay, we're just gonna throw these in the trash? Okay, to a landfill they go. Now, another observation that I think is really good to do is record the batch number 
on the package. And the batch number along with the expiration date is important because these strips are good two years unopened. So if you buy them and you have them sitting around, they should probably be kept at, you know, a dark place, room temperature, uh, and storage until you do use them. So it also says that you should use these when you open the package up because it activates them once that package is opened. And I know you could probably seal it off and wait and use them later, but I kind of think it's activated a little bit once you open them and expose them to air. So you might, I see this came with 10 strips, I believe. So you might as well have a couple of hives ready to, to treat. You would use four and two hives. That would give you eight. Two left over, maybe you have a single deep, you can throw the other two in. So you see guys, following that label isn't all that bad. I really encourage you, follow that label. I would never recommend that if somebody else had better luck using four of them in a deep box. A, a guy down the road that's a friend of yours, he used four of them in a, in a deep and it killed more mites than ever. And you can't do that, do not do that. That's not how we use chemicals in this way. Uh, that's sometimes uh, how chemicals get taken off the market where we can't use them anymore because they're abused and maybe they can be pulled off. So follow the rules, follow the laws, do it the way they said. Just like when you go to the doctor, they tell you to take this kind of medicine and when to take it, you're gonna follow that. You need to follow this treatment of your bees as well. This is Apivar. 3.33% uh, amitraz. So I hope it's been helpful. I'm not going to speak to how effective it is or isn't. I'm just showing you how we use them. And that way you can make your own decision and do your own trial studies on how effective they are and what best suits your needs on controlling mites. And again, in case you missed this in the beginning, I'm going to be walking through some of the more common treatments for varroa mites uh, in videos like this one. So stay tuned. This may be a good opportunity for you to subscribe and click on the bell. That way you'll be notified when I make a video on uh, Formic Pro and when I make a video on hops and when I make a video on thymol. When I do a video on these other treatment methods, you need to be around for that. So click on that bell so you'll be notified each time I make a new video. Let's, let's, like, let's be honest, a lot of this is just up in the air on how to do it. And I think if you follow what I'm teaching you about these different treatment methods, it may take some of the pressure off of you and you might be more apt to use these chemicals chemicals to control mites. Now let's speak briefly about, do we really want to use treatments and chemicals in hives from where we're taking honey to eat from? Well, you know, I understand your concern about that. That's why we like the soft treatments. And I know uh, Amitrez or Apivar is the hard treatment. But uh, again, it's been proven over and over. And most honey that we buy at the store, I'm sure comes from large commercial operations where these kind of treatments are used to control their mites. So it's not like we're getting totally natural unless you buy organic honey some, some way. So I think it boils down to uh, your own philosophy of how you want to view mite treatment. Are you willing to take the risk of your bees dying from the varroa mites, the viruses that they spread by not using chemicals or treatments? Or are you gonna try, like I said earlier, some IPM methods, green drone comb, powdered sugar dusting, screen bottom boards, breaking the queen's brood cycle. See if you can maintain a level of mites that's acceptable below the threshold without using these things. It's just gonna be important for you to test for mites. Now, this is something that a lot of you are struggling with, and I think these videos coming up are gonna really be helpful for you. Again, don't forget July 4th, we're gonna have all of our online classes at 50% off. That's why we got the American flag here. I know some of you are watching from other countries, but the 4th of July is a real celebration here in America. Fireworks, a day off from work, cookouts, and we're just looking forward to having a good fun holiday with family. Now, if you really want to be a successful beekeeper, I got five tips for you in a video that you'll really like. Check this video out right here. Five tips on how to become a successful beekeeper. Makes a lot of sense. I'm going to meet you over there.